What I want to talk about now, though, is the subject of fact-finding. So we're talking about fact-finding. What I'm talking about is uh, how, how do you fact-find? Now, I'm not talking about the general fact-finding. We know how to do that as mortgage advisors. But how do you fact-find online is the key to this topic, really. Fact-finding, as you appreciate, is filling in a form, pretty much, but it's actually having a decent conversation with your customers to find out what their needs and wants, desires, goals, ambitions, life is all about. And good fact-finders have a really good conversation. And that's the point, you see, because when you're on camera, on Zoom or Teams or whatever, your, your, your video technology, we need to, to keep our eye on the customer. We need to engage with them so that they talk to us. So the key thing about fact-finding online is that you maintain you know, contact with the eyes. Do you know what the eyes do? Let's put a couple of glasses in there for you. In other words, the camera. So if you've got a camera, which you have on top of the monitor, you've got to maintain contact with that camera because that's the eye contact you've got to give the customer. Now, some people have taught to, to you know, stare at the lens and never let go. OK, I get all that. Kaiki, I teach the topic myself. And right now I'm looking at a couple of camera lenses over there because that's where you guys are and I can see you clearly. Well, I can't actually, I can just see a camera lens. But when you're talking to an individual uh, and fact-finding, you'll want to be able to look at the camera lens and the person at the same time in order to gauge their reactions and their, and, and their sort of eyes and their facial movements and all sorts of things. But you do need to give them eye contact. That's a bit of a challenge, and we've got videos on that topic. But the big problem, though, is when you've got a fact find and you're having to fill in some kind of form, um, if, it, if it's on paper, sometimes people still do have paper forms, or you're typing it straight onto the laptop using your keyboard. People do various ways, and some, some people have tablets where they actually write on the tablet and it creates words. So I've got some ideas to help you do that because... If you don't do it very well, you'll look down on the keyboard or, or the piece of paper and you'll lose eye contact. And, and if it's face to face in person, it's not so bad because you're there still, aren't you? But when you're not um, there, you're on camera, as soon as you take your eyes away from the customer and start writing or typing, you lose that connection. So let's just take a look at how we can do this. A couple of ideas for you. First of all, find another way of getting the data that you need. So I talk here about the hard facts, the, the, the boring stuff. Find another way of getting that. So create a portal on your website, for example, so that the customer goes in beforehand, types all the basic information, the data, the hard facts. Get those done beforehand because you don't need to collect those in person. That's nonsense, really. The customer should be able to contribute and do that, even if you just send them a word file to fill in before, before the actual meeting itself. The second thing is, stop calling it a fact find. I think that's a horrible word, don't you? A fact find. Blame that on the regulator. They created that back in 1986 when it first came in. The, uh, the, the whole point of fact find is you find facts. No, it's a conversation. It's a chat. It's a one-on-one, uh, one-on-two -on -one, one -on conversation about clients' needs, wants, desires, goals. It's a, it's a life conversation. Call it what you like, but don't call it a fact find anymore because it's horrible. It just puts people off, doesn't it? It's like an interview. Um, it's like an appointment. <laughs> people keep calling things appointments, don't they? You only have appointments with dentists, don't you? We call it a, a mortgage interview. I mean, for crying out loud, an interview is something you have a job interview, isn't it? No, it's called a conversation. It's a general chat as well. So get it done online if you can, if you're a portal. If not, then tell the customer that for the first 10 minutes, we're going to have just a question answer session. So I'm just going to ask you loads of questions for 10 minutes just to get the facts. You know, I'm not, don't worry about my eyes not talking to you. I'm just going to take the facts now. So preempt the fact that that's what you're going to do for 10 minutes. That's, that's possibly another idea of doing it as well. Just get it over with, get the pain over with within 10 minutes as well. Now, the other thing you can think about doing is to make it easier to make notes as you're having a conversation about their needs. Try not to sort of type it up or write it on a pre-formatted form. Try and find a way of doing it quickly. So you might, for example, have um, a piece of paper and you might mind map the information. You might, I mean, I mind map all the time. Now, mind mapping allows you to put one or two words as to what's been said um, according to the branch. You might have over here, you might have um, future housing. And every time they talk about that, you might want to mention a couple of quick 
keywords in the mind map. The whole point there is you're keeping eye contact with the lens because you're only writing down one or two words. Or take notes where you're only jotting down a couple of words as well might work as well. I'm not talking here about the facts, I'm talking here about the soft information, the information that helps you to get the client's needs, goals, desires. Because if you're going to go around that conversation, you've got to keep that eye contact going. Um, be careful of the keyboard. Now, I know that some of you have to type straight into the uh, computer or laptop, whatever it is, because your compliance people tell you you have to. Um, but not a lot of these people have done the job properly, so it's very difficult now. Now, if you're typing, then it will be heard, and it is a distraction. You can hear keyboards. Don't care what people say. You can hear keyboards. You can see people typing. And of course, you become a touch typist. That would solve the problem, wouldn't it? Be able to keep eye contact all the time, just keep typing. But you forget where you're putting it in the various fields. Actually, that would be a good option as well, touch typing. Get some training on that as well. Um, okay, there's some ideas. Afterwards, when, when the fact find has finished or when the discussion has finished, get onto your phone and audio record what's just been said. So you use the icon and audio record what's been said because it's fresh in your mind. So grab your phone and record all the soft facts, all the soft information that's been talked about. And that way, put it, put it onto an MP3 and put the MP3 on the file. That's your record of the soft facts. You've got your hard facts in other kind of way. So you know, keep your people happy with the hard facts one. But the soft information, while it's fresh, get your phone or whatever you like to use, PC or whatever, and audio record it. And if you get really clever at that, what you could do is use some kind of software. So um, I, know I, I use Otter, otter.ai which is um, a website, you might want to head over there and, and, and check them out, otter.ai, artificial intelligence is called. Now, they're, they're pretty good at transcribing audio. So audio record it, whip it over to Otter, and they'll send you a transcription of all the information that's been talked about, which you'll probably want to put onto your best advice software, your sourcing software, in order to produce your suitability later on. So that's a really good way of doing it as well. Um, the other thing, of course, final thing, is get the call recorded. Um, a lot of people are doing that now. You know, the little recording button at the top of the Zoom button there. Just get it recorded. Get permission, of course, but record the video. Record the, um, the, the audio, maybe, the audio segment. It can be done easily. And put it onto the system, upload it, and that way, of course, you've got a fantastic record of the, of the meeting, haven't you? <laughs> if anything ever goes wrong in 10 years' time, you can watch it, or your compliance people in the complaints department can watch it. But the point is, though, you've got it there available to you to refresh yourself on what's been said. Now, I know that your compliance people will put problems on these ideas because that's what they do. So, yeah, make sure that your, your, uh, your compliance people um, cooperate, if you like, and buy into whatever they want to do. So make sure you get some ideas. But the point is, though, make it as painless as possible. And enjoy the process. And that way you'll have a good online video-based fact-finder. Right. I hope that's been useful.